All right, it's about noon, um, so we should get started. Uh, and our first talk is uh, Liam, who's going to talk about the maple tree. And I'll turn on. All right, uh, so uh, this talk is about uh, the maple tree. I'm Liam. Um, it's a new data structure based on the uh, bee tree. It was created to optimize uh, for range storage to be RCU safe, uh, used with many readers, few writers. Uh, the nodes are uh, cache aligned, uh, so it's, or uh, to be cache efficient, they're, uh, they're size to be cache efficient. Uh, so I'm going to walk through the, uh, the introduce the problem space, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the maple tree. I'll run through the first uh, use case we're going to be doing, and maybe dive a bit deeper into the tree, and then uh, discuss our path forward uh, with, with people hopefully in this room. Uh, so first, why another tree? Well, uh, right now there's essentially uh, two trees in the kernel. There's the radix tree, which is a tri, and there's the RB tree. Uh, the radix tree is extremely efficient when it's uh, compact. But when you get sparse radix tree, it becomes uh, extremely poor to search for things. Um, the RB tree, on the other hand, uh, it's, it uses function pointers, which have become rather inefficient in recent uh, security patches. Uh, the design of the RB tree nodes uh, is not aligned with cache size, uh, so it will be hard to, to uh, to compete with something that was designed to be cache efficient. Uh, it, uh, it also means uh, the, the uh, RB tree also uh, has uh, lock contention issues. Uh, so the, the maple tree uh, is a bit different from the traditional B tree. Uh, B trees were used for disk data structures, so they're really large nodes. We use really small nodes. And the reason we use small nodes is because uh, the linear searches of our nodes uh, is rather quick and cheap. Uh, and allocating and copying the nodes is also cheap, uh, which is really good because to be RCU safe, you actually have to allocate a lot of nodes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the node size right now is uh, 128 bytes, uh, two cache lines. Uh, but we're looking at maybe going to three. We'll, we'll see how uh, benchmarking looks. Uh, so here's an example of, uh, of uh, the RB tree and the maple tree. Um, each have uh, seven ranges. The maple tree uh, here shown is uh, half size nodes because uh, we could actually fit all of this in, in one node so it would be kind of a boring slide if it wasn't. Uh, so if you, if you look at uh, the average um, dereference of an RB tree, it goes from either, either from one uh, if you have 35 to 44, uh, or you, two, if you go to the second level, or three, uh, the maple tree will always have two in this scenario. Um, basically, um, in the ideal, ideal RB tree, um, you could have a better best case, but uh, on average, it's, it's worse um, in, in dereference counts. Um, but if you look at a suboptimal, uh, these are worst case scenarios. Um, it's the same ranges, uh, but the trees aren't balanced. And as you can see, the RB tree, uh, you can get up to a number of, uh, a higher number of uh, dereferences, whereas the maple tree still uh, maintains two uh, dereferences to get to, to what you're looking for. Uh, so here's an example of a full-size maple tree node. Um, it, this one uh, oh wait, um, holds 16 ranges. I've switched the hex here because uh, slide bloat. Um, so these uh, 13 ranges uh, are stored in, in four nodes, uh, each 128 bytes, so 512 bytes uh, to get 13 ranges. Uh, those 13 ranges in, in this scenario don't even touch, so you actually have to insert null pointers, uh, or no, null entries in between uh, the ranges uh, for the tree to be valid. Uh, so even, even with that, we're still pretty densely packed. Um, here's an overview of the tree nodes. Uh, 
There are different uses for each tree type, uh, but we believe that the maple tree can make the kernel more efficient. Um, so if you notice, uh, the RB tree is not RCU safe. Um, that's kind of a limitation and, yep. The RB, the RB tree is RCU safe. It's RCU safe? Yeah. Okay. actually uh, RCU safe, but you really want to wrap uh, your access, RCU access to it, your RCU walk in something like a C-clock, so that you can tell that it's changed and that your walk may be becoming valid. So you have to restart your walk? Yes. Okay. And is that in the default implementation of the RCU? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Uh, so slightly outdated slide, I guess. Um, <laughs> Uh, to give an example of the, uh, the height of the, uh, the trees, if we had a million entries here and the radix tree was densely, uh, the dense indices, then the radix would be uh, four high, uh, the RB tree would be 18 high, and the maple tree would be seven. Uh, it's because we have a branching factor of eight on each uh, level. Uh, so that's, well, eight right now, anyways. Uh, so, we decided to tackle one concrete problem first, and it was the VMA. Um, the VMA has a complicated uh, number of things that it needs to be able to do. Uh, first, you have, need to have the ability to do overwrite existing VMAs. You need to iterate over all the VMA entries uh, for PROC PID maps. Uh, VMAs uh, need to grow on page faults, such as stacks. Um, and you need an efficient way to find the gaps. And not only do you need an efficient way to find gaps, uh, but the gaps that you need to find are generally within a window. And you have the search either from the start of the window uh, or, and, and work your way up or, or at the, the end of the window and work your way back. Um, so right now, uh, this is done with RB trees, uh, but the RB tree has to be threaded. Uh, so there's uh, something like six links uh, to do that. Um, so it, it causes some MMAP semaphore locking uh, contention uh, with larger tasks. So this is uh, the general area where we're, we're looking at uh, making it more efficient for the, for the MMAP uh, semaphore. Uh, so right now we have, uh, we have three node types. Um, so when you start using the maple tree, uh, first I'd, I'd like to point out, we, we use pivots instead of keys. Uh, the B tree used the key terminology. We call it pivots because it's a range. Uh, it's just a nomenclature type thing. Um, and we have, uh, we have an entry, uh, a, a range node, which just tracks ranges. Uh, there's eight ranges per node. Uh, and we have an allocation range or an A range. And the A range has five entries and five gaps. And the gaps uh, indicate uh, the largest space uh, below in the, in the subtree of that slot. Uh, this isn't done at the leaf nodes because, uh, well, it's cache, uh, two cache lines. So it's really quickly to, quick to calculate um, the gaps uh, within a, a leaf node. We also have a second type of leaf node called a dense, and the dense is essentially, it's 15 entries with the implied location based on, on where we are. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're debating going to 192 uh, uh, as opposed to uh, 128. Uh, that will give us a more uh, branching for the A range, and, that, and that's kind of our motivation at looking there. Uh, we'll have to see how benchmarking does. Uh, more data, better results, right? Uh, so this is the, uh, this is the uh, a picture here of, of the nodes. This is how I view them uh, logically. The min and the max uh, come from uh, the parent nodes. Uh, the root starts at zero, goes to U long max. Um, anything that's greater than the previous pivot uh, and equal to or less than the next pivot returns the entry of that slot. Uh, the gaps indicate, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the largest space in the subtree of the slot. Uh, so depending on which type of uh, node you're using, you get a gap or, or you don't. Uh, it's actually uh, 
we don't really mix these, uh, but uh, you can't, the uh, range 64 can be used uh, in the leaf nodes, uh, regardless of, uh, of if you're using the allocation tree or not. Uh, it's worth noting that the, uh, the allocation range uh, node has uh, one unused 8-byte entry. Um, uh, and if you notice, every uh, node obviously has a link to its parent in there. Uh, so how do we get so much information in the tree? Uh, well, to further reduce the storage space for cache efficiency, we align to uh, 128 bytes. And we use the, uh, it allows us to encode information in the last seven bits. Uh, it's where we store our metadata. Um, if we go to 192, we'll actually lose a bit, uh, kind of. <laughs> but if we go to 256, we gain one. But then we're, we're using, you know, uh, four cache lines. Uh, so we'll see what benchmarking yields. Uh, so uh, if we move on to uh, the projected performance, if we look at a, a perfectly balanced RB tree, it would require more dereferences to find a, the desired VMA. Uh, this is achieved by the branching factor of the maple tree. Um, again, it's five for uh, allocation ranges and eight for regular right now. Um, I had a benchmark. Uh, but it was against the radix tree for comparison, so I need I need to write a better a, a new one uh, to benchmark the RB tree. Um, so yeah, uh, we're about uh, we're we're slightly better at dereferencing um, at our worst case, so it's it, it's promising to perform better than the uh, RB tree. Sorry, say again. Counting the number of cache lines accessed, or the when you count the, 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 the it's the dereference is the hop between each. Uh, it's not the cache line accesses. No, it's it's the node jumping. Uh, the cache line actually uh, you'd probably double it for hours, and I have no idea on the RB tree. It depends on what your data structure is with the RB tree head or what have you, right? So I'd, I'd have to look at the what the VMA does there. Uh, so looking at the, uh, the memory used, the RB tree uses 48 bytes, which uh, is about 66 kilobytes for Firefox. Uh, this Firefox test is uh, 1,415 VMAs. Uh, we're adding extra uh, entries uh, in the maple tree, about 20% more for the nulls. Um, it's just the way that the maple tree works. You have, uh, because it's ranges, if you have a gap uh, that is empty, you need a null entry, or uh, yeah, a null entry there. Um, but um, this allows us to be between 20% worse for space and 50% and better. Uh, but in average, we're, we're about 20% better. Uh, so that's also a promising aspect of the tree. Uh, so the current uh, development status is it's uh, the VMA API is nearing completion. I was hoping to have it done. Uh, before the conference, and I was hoping to have uh, benchmarking done as well. Uh, but it turns out uh, when you have a B tree and you can completely destroy half of that B tree, balancing is hard. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so if, if you store over half your nodes, you have to do some uh, very interesting uh, rebalancing acts. Uh, so that's still what I'm uh, currently working on. Uh, also, coalescing nodes is difficult when you're switching node types. Um, so um, we're able to change between dense and, and range nodes, depending on the, the, uh, the information stored. Uh, and when, you're, um, when you delete something and you're combining nodes, it, 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 it gets a bit tricky. Um, so there's future work uh, that we want to look at uh, solving with this after the VMA. Um, and one of those is the PID allocation problem. Um, basically, right now, it's a radix tree, I believe. No one disagrees. Um, like <laughs> um, The radix tree is really good, like I said, for densely packed things. Uh, but if you have PIDs or something like a C group ID that is being used up and then uh, not run, not removed in sequential order, 
then the radix becomes sparse uh, rather quickly. And when it becomes sparse, it becomes inefficient. Uh, because we're able to change the node types in our tree, uh, we're able to compact the areas that need compacting uh, and reduce the number, the, the height of the tree in the areas that, that are needed. Um, so that's something that should uh, help um, help the performance in, in sparsely uh, populated radix trees. Uh, so on store, if it's too dense, we replace the dense leaf node with a sparse leaf. And on store, if the sparse leaf node becomes too full, we replace it with a dense. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of, and uh, yeah, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the leaf nodes are never A range nodes, so they're always range 64s. So you have at least eight entries in there. Um, Another thing we're looking at is uh, larger dense nodes. Right now, our dense nodes carry 15. But if we take a whole page, we can get 512. Um, I'm not sure how many is enough here. Uh, some companies uh, use a lot of file descriptors. And I'd like those companies to come talk to me about how many file descriptors is enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so that we can we can design this into the uh, into the algorithm and into the into the data structure. Um, I, I think uh, yeah, hopefully someone can come up after or or even in the end. I have I have a slide with with questions and I'd like to to talk about it then. Um, we're also looking at possibly replacing hash tables uh, with the data structure, and I know it's going to be an uphill battle. Uh, but it's mostly where missized uh, hash, hashes are used. If you pick something, you know, too big, uh, you're wasting space. Uh, but if you, if you pick, pick something too small, you end up with a long chain, and then you're walking a chain of linked lists to find your entity. Uh, it actually might be more, make more sense to use trees. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, are we going yeah. to be replacing X arrays with uh, maple trees, too? Or what's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> Well, 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 hold on now. We're, we're not going to replace the X-ray. We're just going to use the X-ray, but the back end just might, might be different, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We're, we're aligning the interfaces to be extremely similar, uh, and that's not by accident. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're debating uh, maybe in the future this might be the backing for the X-ray. Uh, so that would be. Uh, <laughs> That would increase the users of the maple tree, so that would be good. And things would just get faster, right? That's, um, yeah, so uh, that, that is something we're looking at doing. Uh, the, the hashes also lose locality. Uh, so if, um, uh, if your hash has a lot of churn, uh, you might end up uh, in a better scenario if you use a tree as well. Uh, the short-term plan, well, the short-term plan is to finish the VMA tree conversion. Uh, that includes coalescing, uh, benchmarking, and ideally a better store operation. Uh, the store right now, like I said, if, if you store something that overwrites a, a, a copious amount of the tree, it's, it's, a, it's a pain. Um, don't do that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll fix it. Um, we're also looking uh, for uh, search marks. Uh, we need to know how many search marks people want. Um, I'm hearing five. I'm, I'm not sure if that's, that's the number. We, we have a design of a new node that supports up to 18. Uh, <laughs> uh, that might be too many. Uh, I don't know if that's possible to have too many. Um, the other thing is the, uh, the file system people uh, tend to want 32-bit, uh, 32 bit with 64-bit pointers. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be tricky. Um, and, and there's also people who use these tiny CPUs that are only 32 bits. I don't know, I don't know what they're doing, but uh, I, I guess that's in, embedded or something. Um, but we don't, um, we're, we're, we have the work on that after. Uh, and right now, we don't have a plan for overlapping ranges. Um, but it's something we're looking at. And, and if you guys, if, if anyone, anybody out there uh, wants to work on it with us, uh, please come talk to me. I'd like to 
learn more about the problem space and, and tackle it. Overlapping ranges is something that uh, is currently only done, I think, in the RB tree uh, in kernel. And it would be good to, uh, to have an alternative or at least examine possible, uh, possible alternatives. Um, we're also looking at different uh, node types. Um, uh, sparse 64, so basically just uh, a number linked to, uh, or a range linked to, to uh, it's a bit different than, than our current node, uh, current node layout. Um, every time we get a new uh, metadata bit or, or we figure out how we don't need a particular metadata bit, uh, Matthew wants to add another node type. Uh, so <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll, see how, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and, and like you pointed out, the X-Array API is very similar to the maple tree uh, for some unknown uh, yet convenient reason. How, how does it compare to interval tree? Say again? How does it compare to interval tree? Uh, interval tree? Uh, so the interval tree, well, it depends on your implementation. Uh, the, the interval tree we only use now is, I believe, the RB tree, right? And it's up to you to write interval trees in the, in using the RB tree. I mean, there's in lib, there's an interval tree API and a set of interval tree E things. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 it's just a wrapper around RB tree, but just API wise, can we take that and just put that in here and be done, done with that or? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, if, if we're looking at designing uh, overlapping ranges, we could look at uh, using the same uh, interface or at least a similar interface. Uh, generally, well, what, what Matthew did with the X-Array is he, he looked at the uses of the Redix tree and how people misused and perhaps uh, conveniently fell into a working uh, Redix tree implementation and tried to help them uh, use the right thing. I think we would have to do something of that sort. We, we, we'd want to look at the users of, of the ranges and see if they're, if they're doing all the same thing, then maybe we just pull that right into the interface anyways if we're going to change it. So I wrote interval tree and it was specifically to deal with people who have overlapping intervals and want to find intersections and that sort of thing. Yeah. And the vast majority of users actually don't have overlapping intervals and they just want to not have to write their search function for the arbitrary, really. Right, uh, so they could just go right to this. So that would I be great. think having something that has a nice API for people who don't have overlapping intervals would be great. Yeah, so that's, that's what we're trying to do. Um, it's, it, we really want a simple API, uh, usually, uh, and, a, and a complex one. Because <laughs> some people want the complex uses, um, but we, we want the majority of the people. We want to, people just want to store data, right? And, and, they, and they look around and they say, oh my goodness, what do I have to do to store data in this thing? And then they say, well, I'll just stuff it in a Radix tree. And then the performance is terrible, but it works. So they just move on and they'll go back to it later, but they never do. Right? So if we can make their lives easier by giving them an easy interface to use, and, and ideally something that performs decently in what the majority of people want, then great. But um, there's places like the VMA that always will always need a complex use uh, to get what it needs. And if we tackle the hard problems, then um, if it works for the hard problems, then we should be able to solve the easier problems as long as we don't ignore them uh, while we're designing. And that's, that's kind of where we're going with this. So just one quick note. Uh, there are only, I think, a handful of users of the interval tree. Uh, there were a couple of DRM users and RMAP uh, last I checked. Uh, we were looking at it from the ext4 angle before we, we rejected it as not being better than what we were currently using. So I'd actually looked at that recently. Okay, so there's not that many to look at. I think there'll be even less soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the big difference between maple tree or basically Redix tree and RB tree is the embedded versus non-embedded type of nodes, which basically translates to need to allocate memory on insertion versus you don't have to. Yeah. So the, currently, some of the interval tree users use the fact that you know they have some object which they have previously already allocated. Inside the object, they have the embedded node, so the insertion never fails. 
Now with the maple tree, in principle, the insertion could fail because of the memory allocation failure and stuff like that. An so allocation failure is yeah. your concern? Well, it's possible, certainly, yeah. Yeah, so... so, so uh, it's just like that converting current users of RB tree or interval tree to maple tree can need to deal with memory allocation failures during node insertion, basically. Or possibly even removal. Oh, I'm not sure about your code, whether node, node removal can lead to node splits, which then means basically need to allocate memory. Yeah. That depends right. exactly on uh, the person. So on erase, you cannot allocate. Um, well, well, we're not allocate, al okay, allocating, okay. right? That's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and we're also, we're, we're keeping in mind the, the, the scenarios. Um, so our, our failure path is to uh, drop the, there, there's a lock at the top of the tree, and we draw, uh, on right you need to have a lock. Uh, we drop the lock and retry. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, the, the allocation is, is a tricky aspect of it. Uh, I'm, uh, it's very much modeled around the way that the XRA does its allocations to try and avoid any of those issues uh, as best as can be avoided. Yeah, because there is, for example, one of the use cases which currently is not upstream but it, it is considered and people are working on it is to implement kind of range locking primitive which then basically needs some kind of interval tree implementation. Now, I'm not speaking about specific interval tree implementation in Linux, but it needs some kind of data structure like in interval tree. And then using maple tree could be useful because it's kind of better than growing your RB tree stuff. But then again, like having to allocate memory on lock is like kind of strange and if it fails, it is a problem, yeah. So, so that's one of the reasons, for example, why, why RB3 can be still useful in some of these cases. Right, so the uh, X-ray, I believe, has a way to do this by reserving? Yes, yes. Right. So, ba so basically, it, because X-ray transferred from Redix3, which has the same problem, so there the users actually were prepared to reserve before insert and then, then use the reservation, yeah. So, Okay, uh, so would the reservation help, or is this? Uh, so, so the reservation certainly helps, but it's kind of, but the conversion of the RB2 users is still difficult because you have to teach them to reserve and then use the reservation. So yeah, it's doable. I, was ju I just wanted to point out that the conversion is not really straightforward in all the cases because of the memory allocation issues and stuff like that. Right, I don't think we will ever, this will ever get rid of the RB3 entirely. It will reduce the usage uh, substantially. For instance, the people who try and find an easy API and then end up in uh, you know range trees that don't yeah. have ranges, um, <laughs> or they're stuffing it into a Radix tree and they have sparse data, that that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that. Uh, you, we could look at embedding nodes within your structure, but then you would have alignment problems for the cache lines and stuff as well. Um, it, it's definitely something to keep in mind, though. Thank you. Uh, where was I on this slide? Probably done. Okay, so there's still some uh, open questions. Uh, how do we handle old shadow entries for, from the page cache? Uh, what should a batch API look like? So some people want to do something for everything. I, I'm not really sure what it should look like yet. Uh, we have a for each. We have you know that sort of thing. But if you if you have a batch, um, and the the large node size again, I, I if those people who use giant file systems that span the globe. Uh, let me know how many file descriptors uh, you would be happy with. Uh, that would really help me out. Um, we're also, like I said before, we're looking at uh, 192 vi uh, byte nodes. Uh, what, what's really neat about that is then the gaps can be moved to its own cache line and the readers would only hit two cache lines and the writers would need all three. Uh, all those, those would be prefetched anyways. Um, it may be prefetched anyways. Uh, it, it would... Uh, it, it just seems very nice, <laughs> at least to me. Um, and, and again, the, the RB tree overlapping range stuff, I guess there are some use cases that we, 
we would need to figure out the allocation issues. Um, but it, it would be good if someone uh, with the allocation knowledge or the overlapping knowledge, uh, overlapping tree knowledge, uh, would like to collaborate with us on that. Um, yeah, and there, there's also other things like new node types um, that we're looking at. Uh, again, every every time we get a, a, a bit, he gets so excited about new node types. Uh, so there'll probably be more. Um, and then, uh, and then the search marks. I'd like to talk to anyone uh, with search mark uh, requirements. Um, please talk now or even after. I'm, I'm happy either. Uh, so that's that's all I have. Um, so that's that's the talk. Um, and one last thing, uh, please uh, sign my key. I'd like to move this work to. Uh, to kernel.org, uh, so if anybody has a key uh, for that, please uh, sign my key. Yeah? Uh, what's, what's the key range on uh, this uh, maple tree? Is it just a 64-bit integer? Yes. Because a number of RB trees are used to ha uh, cache or hold things that have keys that are things like network addresses or network address network address plus network namespace and stuff. I presu presume you can't model those in this. Uh, yeah, so you, well, so it's uh, generally a 64-bit pointer gets stored, so you could point to whatever, or. Well, yeah, but the point is not something you can look up from external data. So you right. get a network packet in, you've got an address in it. It's not a 64-bit pointer, you can't look it up. Uh, so you're looking it up by, uh, so but this is an well indice. The, the RB tree, you can step through it because you provide your own lookup routine effectively. Right. You can do all the compar any comparison you like. Right. So this this yeah. tree stores integers to so, so to integer point up. Right, point so it's up. only that use case. And in, you need an integer as the key. Uh, well, that's the, yeah. That's the indice. Yeah. Uh, could you do other? You we could do other, but you would have to convert it into a sortable thing. Uh, it would be another node type. Well, they are sortable, but. The, the key is basically very long. We're talking tens of bytes. Yeah. Tens of bytes. Uh, yeah, we, we could probably find a way to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think in theory, what you might be able to do is the indice could be a 64-bit, effectively, integer you cast into a pointer, and you provide a sort function where the pointer is ac actually a pointer to the object uh, which ha where you actually have the data, right? Because right now, what you're doing is the RB tree comparison routine is actually looking at fields inside the object to do the compare, right? We just have to somehow find a way of emulating that in a design where you have interior nodes that have no leaf data in them. That's the problem. So you're using the RB tree, you're searching a tree for something, um, but then you also have for some other reason, right? And then, yeah. this, then essentially you're using an RB tree uh, thread it to walk everything? What do you mean by th so? What do you mean by thread? Well, well, so previous we next, right? Oh, it, so, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but th basically, there's a comparison function built into wh whoever call whoever owns the RB tree. Yeah. Right. So we have a previous and next function. So you could, in theory, yeah. just use the same thing. You just yeah. have to, like he said, you'd have to do a conversion. It's just I notice you've got some nodes, and as, as far as I can tell, you're storing the value inside the node sometimes but there is no value to store inside the nodes, per se. Or no, sh no small value you can store inside the nodes. No small value I you think. can store inside the nodes. Because it looks like you've got a, a node type which is like oh seven gosh. pointers and seven values. Yeah, I don't know what this thing did. Uh, so here, this slide maybe would help? Uh, I think it was I'm looking at the not the not the dense one, the the one with the a leaf and a value, leaf value, leaf value. Yeah, yeah, the range so sixty four. All right, because because you, you can't st there are no values you can stick in the the uh, in actually in the node because the values are too big to stick in there. I was wondering how you deal with that. We don't. 
Um, yeah, you, it, it's a, you'd, you'd have to have a pointer of some type, but you, it, and to look it up, like you'd say, uh, you would have to have your own data structure to put in there. Um, and just, what's that? Probably just makes sense to stick with RB chief with that, with that for those for now. Good. Well, it depends why you're in an RB tree in the first place, I guess. Like, why are you using an RB tree and not just a linked list if you're just using previous and next? Because you may have a lot of them and it's a lot faster to search an RB tree than a linked list. But, but you're just, yeah. you're running through every single one. Why is it fast? No, like, how's it? Because you can compare these things. So, like, got two network addresses. See, you can compare them, say, is this one a bit greater than that one or less than that one? So you can do it. I see you're going yeah. left or right every yeah, time. Yeah, so you use a tree, not a. But it's not, so it's not previous or next, then it, you're actually going through. So what are you comparing? The, your giant uh, IP, value. I say IPv6 address or a, a, so, a SOC address or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, you know, we don't cope with that right no, now. That's, that's fair enough. Any other questions? Without entering the detail, what is the looking inside the, the, the maple tree? What is the, the looking you are using to, to, to ensure the uh, atomicity of the operation? Is it possible to change multiple, multiple slots at one time? This kind of stuff. Right. Uh, so uh, to be RCU safe, what we do is we basically, uh, if you're appending to a node, it's fine. Uh, the way the search works, once it hits uh, a pivot of zero, uh, then it knows it's the end of the node. As long as it's not the first uh, pivot of the first node, you're fine. Um, so you write your slot first and then your pivot, and you're fine on appends. Uh, if you are inserting somewhere in the middle, you will need a new node. So that essentially means uh, the, the data of the node is copied, you insert the new one, then the rest of the node is copied into it, uh, and then it's put into the tree. Uh, and that put into the tree is, um, is RCU safe because of the RCU safe thing stuff, right? Uh, the swapping of the, uh, so it, it's either you're guaranteed to get the old value or the new value and not half of whatever, right? Uh, so that's kind of how, how that works internally. And changing multiple slots at the same time if they are not in the same range? Sorry. Changing multiple slots? Uh, at the same time, if they are not in the same uh, range 64 uh, allocation range 64 node. I don't think I even have an API for that. I didn't think there was a use for changing multiple slots at the same time. Um, it, 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 you could do it uh, in the same copy operation as long as you don't overrun your node, in which case you would just create a new subtree, and that new subtree would be swapped in uh, the same sort of way. And that's kind of what I was looking at doing with the store operation of creating a new subtree and then just grafting that into the tree. <laughs> into the tree. Uh, turns out you could uh, p potentially overwrite your entire tree, though. So it's. Uh, it's something read pages could be. Read pages? Yeah, where you, you create tests from two trees and still read them. Yeah. yeah. OK. Yeah the, <clears throat> yeah, the comment I was going to make from a file system perspective is it's not necessarily a batch API per se, but some kind of range delete where you know, you're truncating, so you want to delete everything after a particular key value, or um, you know, from this key value to that key value, we want to remove everything in that range. That's which, not a problem, actually. You can just yeah, store well, a Except null. you have to rotate, right? This is the whole. Uh, you may have to rotate to actually maintain your uh, your tree semantics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can store a null, and then you just uh, it's, it's gone. But uh, it's not an efficient tree anymore. So then, you're kind of stuck either living with that or currently making a new one. So. Yeah, or maybe you maybe you rotate and balance in a work queue or something. But maybe that's overkill. So. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the work queue idea for that. Uh, any other questions? Uh, comment on that. Maybe, you know, one, one of the things is if you can come up with, oh. one of the things is if you can come up with a metric for how, for, you know, or a heuristic 
for how unbalanced your tree is, you can defer your uh, re you can defer your rebuild so that you don't end up with a bunch of ping ponging behavior. Yeah, because at some because generally working on a moderately unbalanced tree is going to um, be more efficient than spending a lot of effort at rebuilding too frequently. Yeah, we, we came to the same conclusion and, and at the beginning we thought, you know what, we're not going to rebalance ever. Uh, and then we came up with a few use cases in which you could theoretically wipe out half the tree and then you're kind of stuck with this <laughs> really bad performer. Uh, so you, d you do have to figure out some strategy. Uh, delaying would be probably a good uh, strategy for some things like if you're tearing down the task and things are getting erased, uh, you don't want to continuously rebalance uh, when that occurs. Yeah, so on, on right, uh, you may need to do uh, allocations to maintain RCU uh, uh, integrity. Copy Say again? Copy on right. Yes, copy on right, essentially. Uh, split on right. Uh, yeah, and it turns out to be, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> we have time for one more question. Okay, well, let's thank the speaker. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.